Welcome back to another episode of The Road Chose Me. My name's Dan Grek, and on today's episode, it's time to answer the question that you've all been asking, where am I going to sleep in my Overland Jeep Gladiator as I go all the way around Australia? And there's no doubt about it, there's more options on the market now than ever before. So there's a million different ways you could set up a vehicle like this. It is important to remember though, that each option has its pros, but they also have their cons as well. So I personally don't believe there's such a thing as perfect or the ultimate or the best. What there is, is different options that work differently for different people, different trips, different weather, all of those things combine to come up with a setup that's gonna work for me for this trip, but that doesn't mean it works for you for your trip. So if you'd like to learn more about my thought process, the things that I considered, the things that I ruled out pretty easily, and then finally I'll show you what I'm using and how that works, stick around, I'll get into all the details right now. So to run through the list of possible sleeping setups on the Gladiator, I think the easiest and the most obvious is a rooftop tent sitting on the roof rack. So I don't have it installed right now, but I will be running a Rhino Rack Pioneer platform. So it's a huge big flat platform. It covers the rear half of the hardtop and it comes just a little bit above the freedom panels in front of this foot. And because these feet are bolted down into the roll cage and the tub, I'm super confident it would be strong enough. So absolutely a rooftop tent really is an option. But to be honest with you, I personally don't like them very much. And so for me, a rooftop tent is just not something that I'm interested in using. I really don't like having all of that weight up so high. I think it really compromises your drivability when you're off-road, when you're in the rough stuff. And I also think that huge big wind resistance just really negatively impacts your gas mileage. Here in Australia, I'm paying like six US dollars per gallon for gas at the pump. So you can imagine if I'm gonna drive 40 or 50,000 miles, I would much rather that I keep getting the 22 miles a gallon I'm getting right now, than if I put a rooftop tent up there and 37 inch tires, maybe I'd only get 15 or 12 miles a gallon. That's gonna be a huge dent in my budget. So for me, while a rooftop tent, it's nice to be up off the ground, it's nice to have a big living area, I just personally am not gonna go with a rooftop tent. Moving down the list of possibles, of course, the Jeep Gladiator, it is a pickup truck. And this is the first pickup truck I've ever owned. So I'm by no means an expert, but of course, I did consider somehow sleeping in the bed of the Gladiator. And first and foremost, the bed on this thing is five feet long and I'm six feet two. So right away, I never really considered actually just putting a mattress in the back and sleeping in the back. Yeah, maybe if I left the tailgate folded down and figured out some sort of canvassy setup to keep the rain off, something to keep the mosquitoes off, maybe that would be an option, but I never seriously considered it. I don't think it would be very enjoyable to sleep in there. I think it's gonna get really hot. I think it's gonna smell a little bit. Plus, the whole reason that I wanna have a pickup truck is so I can put all my camping gear in the back of it. I've got a big kitchen going in there, the fridge, the water tank, all my camping gear like chairs. If I have all that stuff, there's no room for me to sleep in there. So sleeping actually inside the bed of the pickup truck, I ruled that out from day one. Of course, another really good option is there are lots of companies now that make some sort of mounting bracket or rack. It goes in the back of the bed of the pickup truck and you put a rooftop tent on top of that. And what's great about these is the rooftop tent usually sits about at this height, which means it's tucked in behind the hard top of the Jeep. So it doesn't make the Jeep overall any taller. So that really does remove my big negative that I said about wind resistance. It's down below the hard top, so you're not increasing your wind resistance. Also, because it's down a bit lower, you're not putting too much weight up high. So both of those, I think, are really good ideas. And I do kind of like those setups with the rooftop tent basically sitting over the bed of the pickup. And I considered that for a long time, but the reason I chose not to go with it is because again, I think it makes the bed of the pickup a lot less useful. You're really restricting your height, depending on exactly how it mounts and bolts in, you're really restricting what you can put in the bed of the pickup. And also not many of them have any option 
to then enclose the bed of the pickup to keep it out of the dust and out of the sun and out of the rain, whatever it is that you have in there, whether it's your fridge or your kitchen. So I feel like while those options are a good way to mount a rooftop tent, they unfortunately make the bed of the pickup not nearly as useful as it should be. And again, if I'm gonna drive a pickup, surely I wanna be able to use the bed of the pickup and have this as my kitchen area. So it didn't really make sense to me to compromise the bed of the pickup and basically render it close to useless just so I could have a rooftop tent mounted there. It feels like a lot of extra amount of vehicle to drive around with just so you can mount a rooftop tent. And so to me, that's why I didn't go that option. And then really the next option that I think everyone expected me to go with is some sort of camper on the back of the Gladiator. And with the boom of overlanding in the last five or 10 years, there are now probably 10 or 15 options, some of them specifically made for the Jeep Gladiator. So what I'm talking about is some sort of hard shelled camper, maybe made out of fiberglass, maybe made out of some composite material, and it covers the whole bed and it actually stretches above the hard top as well. And typically they open as like a wedge shape and there'll be fabric or canvas around the whole thing. And so I could list brands all day long, but really the famous ones, they're made by AT Overland. They make the one called the Summit. This photo here is actually my friend Matt's. I think these things are excellent. There is of course, Go Fast Campers. And all of these, of course, are available for all pickup trucks, not just the Gladiator. So Go Fast Campers is another great option. Four wheel camper make, I think, kind of more high end, fully integrated systems that have, you know, integrated water tanks and pumps and heaters and all of that kind of stuff. And then there's even DIY options. There's a really great thread on Tacoma World about a guy who actually made his own and he has the whole bill of materials and the whole process to make your own. And I considered all of those at great lengths, but there's a few different reasons that I didn't go with them. And first and foremost, for me, it comes down to budget. Most of these campers start at about 6,000 US and they pretty quickly get up to 15,000 US, which is an enormous amount of money for me. And if I spent all that money on the camper, I wouldn't have so much money to spend on the trip. That's a big negative. But of course, I also have to remember that I'm all the way over here in Australia. Those campers, they're made in the US. I have to try and get one from there to here. And with shipping right now with COVID, that's gonna take three to six months, maybe even longer. It's gonna cost at least a few thousand dollars in shipping, plus at least a few thousand dollars in import taxes, custom fees, and all of that junk. So that seven or eight thousand dollar US camper is suddenly more like 15, 18,000 US dollars, which is like 25,000 Australian dollars, which is pretty much how much I'm gonna spend on fuel for the entire trip around Australia. So I could either have a really tricked out camper or I can pay for the whole trip around Australia. So money wise, buying one of those campers didn't really make sense to me, but there is another really big reason as well. And that is the payload that they eat up. Even the really lightweight options are about three or 400 pounds. That's a lot of payload that you're giving up really just to give yourself somewhere to sleep. The Gladiator is not famous for its high payload. You know, this isn't a Land Cruiser. This isn't actually a heavy duty work vehicle. And so payload is precious. And for where I wanna go in Australia, I need to carry additional fuel. I need to carry a lot of drinking water. Those aren't optional. I can't survive if I don't bring those. So that immediately brings my payload down. Along with that, of course, I'm going to need food. I need a fridge to keep that food in. I need some clothes. I have to bring all my camera gear. I have to bring tools and spares. None of those things are optional. All of those are detracting from my payload. So to then go and subtract 500 pounds of payload for a camper, that's starting to really push it. And at that point, I would be over the gross vehicle weight limit. It would be overweight. And all of my friends who have campers on gladiators, they are over the weight limit of their gladiator. That is a fact. Nobody really talks about it in the industry, but basically every overland vehicle that is fully decked out, it's over its payload. And so for me on this trip, I wanted to try really hard not to go over the payload. And there's another reason I chose not to go with a camper on the back of the Gladiator. And that just comes down to, I've sort of done it already. 
So the Jeep that I drove around Africa, it had an integrated pop-up on the roof of the Wrangler, which more or less is the same thing. It opens as a wedge, you get canvas around the outside, you can stand up and walk around in the back, which is pretty much what all of the campers on the market would offer. Sort of the difference here is, because the Gladiator is a pickup, you contained to being in the bed of the pickup. So if you had anything in the back seat, you have to get out of the camper, walk around, open this door and get it. Versus my Wrangler, so much shorter, it's all kind of in there as one unit. But in a sense, I felt like I've been there, I've done that. I know what the pros are, I know how good it is. And yes, it is extremely good, but I also know what the downsides are, or I also am sort of ready to try something else. So for me, one of those campers, they never really excited me. They weren't what I was passionate about. And so I didn't choose to go with a camper option. So after running through all of those options, where does that leave us? Well, that kind of leaves us with ground tents, or in fact, this thing, which is a swag. And this is what I've chosen to use for Australia. So when I drove from Alaska to Argentina, I really did just have a ground tent and I set that thing up and I slept in it almost every single night for those two years. And I've got to say, I actually enjoyed it. I like camping. I like sleeping under canvas. It's what I want to do. It's part of the reason that I do trips like this so that I can be out in nature. And setting it up on the ground maybe isn't quite ideal, but you know, I was totally fine with it. I never really disliked it. I did get a bit sick of it as time went on. And so I'm really happy for Africa that I had a pop-up roof and I was above the ground and I was away from all the animals and all of those advantages of the pop-up. But here in Australia, I get to take advantage of this thing called a swag. So for those of you that don't know, a swag is essentially a very heavy duty canvas sleeping bag. And so typically it has a mattress built in, this one does. And in the old days, you literally just rolled it out on the ground and that was it, you were ready to go to sleep. So people might even think of it called a bedroll is kind of the classic version. And so these things have been used in Australia for, I don't even know, maybe a hundred years. This is kind of the traditional way that Aussies camp or sleep on the ground. You roll it out next to the campfire and you're good to go. Remember the weather here is pretty agreeable. I hopefully won't be dealing with monsoons and I'm not dealing with lions or tigers or anything like that. So for Australia, I really like the idea of going with what the locals go with. And again, if I was going to Mongolia, if I was going to India, I probably wouldn't choose this option because maybe security would be more of a concern, more privacy would be a concern. There's a hundred other factors. But here in Australia, I get the opportunity to use what Australians use. And so I'm actually excited to do that. I'm excited to live in one of these things, use it a lot and learn about what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages. So I can tell you right now, this is actually a two person swag. That's why it's as wide as it is give me more living space, more room to move around, and huge, a couple of advantages right off the bat. I bought this thing for $175. $175 all in for a sleeping setup. That makes it the world's cheapest Gladiator sleeping setup. Also, the whole thing, even though it's a two-person one, with a mattress built in, with sheets, uh, there's no pillow in there right now, but there will be soon. I think it weighs about 30 pounds, about 15 kilograms. So does that also make it the world's lightest overland sleeping setup? It's certainly close to it. Of course, downside, it is massively bulky. This is five, six, seven times bigger than the ground tent and the air mattress and the sleeping bag that I used from Alaska to Argentina, but it is super durable canvas. So I'm really confident that it's up to the challenge and that it's gonna be durable enough for the whole trip. And so at a high level, my plan is, yeah, I'll roll this out on the ground essentially every night of the trip. And when the weather is a little bit bad, I haven't done it yet, but an awning I'll be putting on the side of the Jeep very soon, a 270 degree bat wing awning. So the whole side of the Jeep will be under cover. So my plan is if the weather's terrible, whip out the awning, peg it down, then I can just roll this thing out under the awning and I'm essentially out of the rain in my swag and a little bit of living area under the awning too. I'll have a chair so I can, you know, sit down. Obviously my kitchen will be under the rear of the awning as well. Of course, in terms of downsides, I do have to think a little bit about animals. 
Here in Australia, we don't have big predators. There are snakes and spiders to consider, though personally, I think they've been way overhyped. I mean, I've been here for three months and I haven't seen a single dangerous thing since I got here. Uh, I think it's, you know, you have to go looking for them. Obviously, I'll keep it zipped up so nothing can crawl in there with me. Obviously, I'll keep my boots inside overnight. Nothing winds up in my boots. I really don't think that's a big concern. And actually, on my adventures, I'll show you every time I do come across something dangerous and I'll let you decide how often it happens. Probably the biggest thing I have to worry about is crocodiles. The northern third of Australia does legitimately have crocodiles. I will be camping next to rivers that have crocodiles in them. And so that is a concern, something I do need to think about. Lots of people do set these up on an elevated platform. It just gets you about two feet off the ground. I guess it makes it a little more comfortable and it just does get you away from the creepy crawlies and maybe the big lizards as well. It's not really something I'm looking at, but I'll do a little bit more research and see if I think it's gonna be worth it. So in terms of the swag, another huge advantage is pretty quick setup time, pretty quick teardown time, and relatively simple. So I'll set it up now and I'll show you guys what that looks like. So there you have it, that's the swag set up. I'm ready to go to sleep. And you can see swags have evolved quite a bit. They used to be just a big canvas sleeping bag. Now they are more or less a tent. This one actually has three poles, you could see. I don't really love that middle pole and I'm not even sure how often I'm gonna use it. And obviously I have to peg it out lengthwise as well. That's the only thing that actually keeps it up and stops it collapsing on itself. So that's only the second time I've set it up ever. Uh, I still haven't actually slept in this thing yet. So I'm sure I'll get more efficient at setting it up and packing it away. And you can see packing it away is gonna be really fast. Pull the pegs out, pull the poles out, roll it up and throw it in the back. So it has, you can see right now, it's just the mesh. So if I was asleep in there, I'd be able to see the stars, but keep the bugs off, which I think is great. And something that I have, which I think makes a huge difference when you're on a long-term trip, is a little 12 volt fan. And I've talked about in the past how essential these are, because no doubt about it, it's gonna be hot on my trip. And so having a small fan, I'll have it actually inside the swag just to go to sleep. I think it makes a huge difference. So that's a must have. But other than that, that's what I've got. I'm gonna sleep on the ground again, just like I did from Alaska to Argentina. And a lot of people I know are gonna hammer me in the comments and say, this is a downgrade and you've gone backwards and this is an overlanding. Well, I just wanna say, I don't really think any of that's true because what a lot of people don't realize, when you're on a long-term trip, your car, your vehicle, everything you bring with you, it starts to feel like a bit of a burden. You have to maintain it all, you have to look after it, it rattles, maybe things come loose. It's all maintenance and it's all sort of a burden. And in my opinion, it all detracts from the trip because the whole point of the trip is where you're going. The people that you're gonna meet, the food, the scenery, the animals, the vehicle is not the point of the trip. The vehicle just helps you go on the trip. And so there were so many days in Africa where I actually longed for my little two-door Wrangler that I drove to Argentina. Just a ground tent, super basic setup, and hit the road and go and have adventures. That's actually what I prefer to do. And so that's why I've gone back to a swag. And to be honest with you, in future trips, will I consider something like this again? I don't know, I'm gonna find out. I'm gonna live in this thing around Australia and I'll let you know how it works out. I'll be able to compare the advantages of this thing versus the pop-up roof. And then of course the disadvantages of both of them as well. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm extremely excited to do the Australian thing because I've never done it. It's cheap, it's lightweight, it's pretty quick setup and tear down time. So a lot of advantages, of course, the big, advantage, the big disadvantage sleeping on the ground. I'll let you know how it works out.
So I hope that video has been helpful and I hope that once again, it gets you thinking about what do you actually need for your trip and your needs based on how many people are going, based on how remote you wanna get, how much money do you have to spend and what do you enjoy doing? If you're happy in a ground tent, that's definitely gonna be the best budget friendly option and it's gonna get you on the road sooner. It's also less to maintain, it's less to worry about and it means you can just transfer it between vehicles if you do decide to upgrade or move to some other vehicle. So make sure, spend the time to think about what you actually need. Don't just go and look at what other people are doing and copy them because maybe that won't work very well for you. So I hope the video has been helpful and I hope you've learned a thing or two about how Aussies get out and about and what swags are all about. So if it has been helpful, please do hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. There are plenty of adventure videos coming very soon. So until next time, stay safe out there and maybe I'll bump into you on the road.